one and all, to the sign of the Flying Red Horse. The makers of mobile gas and mobile oil bring you Orson Welles. Good evening, everybody. This is, uh, this is Orson Welles. Tonight, the Mercury Wonder Show is pitching its tent at Camp Cook near Lompoc, California. We always make it a practice to arrive a little early at these camps so we can spend a few hours getting acquainted with the men. And this afternoon, I was having a cup of coffee, and a PFC came over and asked me for my autograph. And I said, sure, where do you want me to sign? He said, right here on this piece of toast. I said, you mean you want me to sign my name on a piece of toast? He said, yeah, after what we've been getting on that toast, your name will be a pleasure. <laughs> but you, you really, seriously, you meet some interesting fellows around the service club. One fellow I spoke with had a chest full of ribbons. I asked him what the blue one was, and he said, campaign ribbon. I got that on the beach at Casablanca. And I said, what's the green one? He said, the campaign ribbon, I got that one on the beach at uh, Messina. And then I said, what's the red one? He said, lipstick, I got that on the beach at Pismo. <laughs> and I got talking to a couple of MPs for the benefit of our listeners, uh, radio audience. An MP is a military policeman. A military policeman who really likes to see a soldier have a good time. In fact, there's, there's one, one thing, only one thing an MP likes better, uh, and that's preventing a soldier from having a good time. But, um, the MPs really do a great job no matter where they are. In one camp, I entertain that we had uh, Gypsy Rose Lee on the show, uh, quite an accomplished artiste. And uh, would you believe it, in the middle of her act, two MPs, jumped up on the stage and tried to arrest Gypsy for being out of uniform. <laughs> well, that, that's what I call devotion to duty. Comes time now, <laughs> comes time now for you to meet our guest of the evening, a lovely young star who was recently voted by you men as the girl you would most like to stand guard duty with, Susan Hayward. <laughs> Thanks a lot, fellas. Hello, Orson. Uh, Susan, why'd you disappear to? We arrived here at three o'clock. I haven't seen you since. Well, I got talking to one of the soldiers. Such a sweet boy. He invited me out with him tomorrow. Some social function they have every few weeks. I think it's called bivouac. <laughs> bivouac. Oh, oh, yes, that's a sort of a camping trip where the soldiers roast marshmallows and have scads of fun. <laughs> Sort of a picnic, huh? Do the wax go along? No, it's not that much of a picnic. <laughs> uh, he, that soldier, he, he must have been a cute kid, this soldier you're talking to, Susan. Oh, he was nice. He took me to the map room and showed me the gun emplacements, and then he asked me if I'd like to see some field operations. He couldn't have been an ordinary soldier. Did he have any stripes on his sleeve? No, no stripes. Oh, but he must have been doing very good in school because he had a silver star on each shoulder. Just, uh, just a plain soldier, yes. Well, uh, <laughs> Susan, we've cooked up a nice little playlist for you to appear in tonight. We think it's nice anyway. But while the sound man is setting up his door slam, let's listen while Kay Thompson sings Louisiana Purchase with a fine group of Thompsonian singers. <laughs> Come on, come on, New York can go to town way down in New Orleans. Louisiana salesman with nothing in his jeans. That's why I'd like to tell you, New Orleans. Come on, come on, New York can go to town way down in New Orleans. Where does that heat come from? 
that rhythmic beat come from and that red meat come from New Orleans, Louisiana Purchase. I've told you what it means. It means I'd like to tell you New Orleans. Come on, come on, and you can all go down, way down in New Orleans. You can take your Philadelphia Scrapple and your Boston Big Beat. But the love of my life is New Orleans. Or say Louisiana. It's just a few points by Louisiana. That's where those blue, blue points come from, Louisiana. Down in New Orleans. New Orleans is in Louisiana. Louisiana, my home is in Louisiana. I could sing, I'd sing the praises of mobile oil to that. Mobile oil, mobile oil, mobile oil. <laughs> but honest folks, your car deserves a good fresh dose of mobile oil, the largest selling motor oil on earth. Think back, when did you last change your oil? You know summer driving calls for summer oil. Don't drive with thin, tired winter oil, it's risky. Your motor runs especially hot in summer. And that thin, worn oil can break down easily, expose important engine parts to damage. Do right by your car, folks. Have the crankcase filled up with summer mobile oil, the right grade for hot, dusty driving days. Mobile oil is built for today's wartime driving. It guards each vital engine part against friction. Actually helps to keep your engine clean. Drive in at the sign of the flying red horse. And to see your car run better, longer, ask for mobile oil. And now, without further ado, the Mercury Players present a little G.I. fable, a drama of light in these United States, the year 1944. The scene, a little bungalow not far from the aeroplane plant, where our hero, Harvey Watson, is employed. If we look in on him now... Harvey is puttering around the kitchen. Oh, happy days are here again. Oh, happy days are... Just a minute. Happy days are here. Hello, Newton. Hello, Harvey. What are you so happy about? Why shouldn't I be happy? My wife's coming home tonight. She's got a two-week furlough. Oh, happy days are here again. Come in, Newton. Don't slam the door. I've got a cake in the oven. Somebody's coming to our house, to our house, to our house. Somebody's How did coming Judy to... manage to get a furlough so soon? Oh, she did something very clever, and they rewarded her for it. Seems some of the girls were repairing the colonel's jeep, and one of the girls started to install a bazooka instead of an exhaust pipe. <laughs> Judy discovered it just in time to keep the wax from having the only colonel in the army with jet propulsion. <laughs> what a girl. There she is, there she is. How do I look? Oh, fine. Oh, I don't. My hair's a mess. Help me out of this apron. Coming. 
Harvey. Judy. Gosh, you look wonderful. Let me look at you. Oh, Harvey. Oh, Judy. <laughs> Darling, you got your stripes. Uh-huh. Technician, fifth grade. How wonderful. <laughs> Kiss me. Hmm. Honey, you're a first grade technician. Well, I guess I better be going. Hey, what's your hurry, Newton? See you next month. Oh, gosh, how I've missed you. Not half as much as I've missed you, honey. I'm proud of you in that uniform and everything, but did you have to join up on our honeymoon? Well, well, darling, you know I wanted to wait till we got back from Niagara Falls. Well, I know your mother talked you into it. We never should have taken her along. Well, let's forget it, dear. I've got a two-week furlough. What's wrong with having our honeymoon now? What's wrong? Oh, oh Judy. <laughs> oh. Mm. I wonder who that is. Mother! Oh, your majority has come through. Gosh, gold maple leaves. Hello, Mother, and congratulations, Major. Eddie, smoke if you like. <laughs> You look wonderful in that uniform, Mother. Don't be so formal. Call me Major. Well, come on in, Mother, and sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Now, now, quit polishing the apple. <laughs> well, I finally got with the outfit I've been hoping for. Which one is that, Mother? 112 paratroopers. <laughs> well, I'm so happy for you, Mother. I, I mean, Major. Won't you stay and have dinner with us? I might as well. I'm hungry enough to eat a bear. Go ahead, Harvey. Get the chow on. Yes, sir. I mean, Mother. I'll put the food on. How long is your furlough, Judy? Two weeks. So is mine. Say, I've got a wonderful idea. I'll stay here with you, Judy. You could use a little indoctrination. Harvey! Harvey, what happened? I dropped the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Oh, that was a wonderful dinner, Harvey. Wasn't it, Mother? It might have been with mashed potatoes. Oh. Come, Judy, let's have our coffee inside while Harvey cleans up the dishes. Well, couldn't I come inside and talk a while, too? Come, come, Harvey, no gold bricking. <laughs> I said do the dishes. That's a detail. Now get on the ball. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. No battle axe. Button into everything, gosh. What, what are you planning to do with your furlough, daughter? Well, Harvey and I haven't really had a honeymoon, Mother, so I'm just going to spend this two weeks with Harvey. Sounds monotonous. <laughs> That's right, Butterfingers. Butterfingers, steady, Harvey. Put that knife down. You'll never get away with it. Well, Mother, we won't be together every night. On Fridays, Harvey usually goes to the fight. Oh, the uh -huh. fight. Hmm. Those men who say they're going out to the fight. Hmm. Ground glass, my dear. Uh, 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 uh. Ground glass that show up in the autopsy. Let me see now. Well, all I know is I was married for 20 years, and my husband never left home to see a fight. He didn't have to. <laughs> Before your father and I agreed to a divorce, he never drank, never smoked, gave me his pay envelope sealed, and never stayed out one night. He was a pretty fair man. I guess he's dead now. He's not dead. He's hiding. Yes, your father was a good man, Judy. And when I think of the men you could have had, and what you wound up with. You better tell him to stop, Judy, before he wrecks the plumbing, too. I'll be through in a minute, dear. A revolver might do it. <laughs> you see, Your Honor, we were just looking at the gun. I didn't know it was loaded. No, that's an old one. That won't do it. <laughs> oh, darling, let me finish. Nonsense, you're tired. Let Harvey do them. Come to think of it, we must all be tired. Maybe we'd better turn in. All right. Mother, you take the bedroom, and Harvey and I will manage all right down here on the day bed. You'll do nothing of the sort. You deserve a good, soft bed. Mother's right, Judy. Well, if you insist, Mother... I certainly do. Go right upstairs. I'll be up in a minute. <laughs> Harvey can sleep down here. Well, lucky I brought the field kit. We'll have something to eat out of tomorrow. 
Good night, Harvey. Good night, Mother. Good night, Harvey. Good night, Judy. Night, Judy. Good night, Judy. Well, <laughs> guess I might as well turn in. No. Oh, the cat. Here, Tom. Here, Tom. Come on. You've been out late enough. Come on, Tom. Get in here before Mother takes away your good conduct ribbon. I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't realize it was after five. I'll get the coffee on right away. Very well. Call me. I'll be in the garden. Good morning, Harvey. Oh, Judy, I, I, I can't stand this any longer. I've had two weeks of it, and it's driving me nuts. I'm going to a psychoanalyst. Oh, but I, darling, I, I look. Look, I can't say anything to her. She's my superior officer. But does she have to play soldier all the time? Just because I forgot to kiss her good night, I got gigged. KP again today. Yeah, KP. And those GI practical jokes of Now, her. honey, look, oh. she won't be here first. I know, but I don't care if she is your mother. I don't like anybody tying knots in my dental floss. <laughs> well, I just don't, that's all. What if I do like a little snack late at night? That's not funny, putting a booby trap in the icebox. <laughs> well, where's breakfast? I was just going to get it, mother. Here we are. Well, this hasn't been a bad furlough. But I think I'll go back to camp this morning. Oh, do you have to, Mother? Ow! Excuse me, dear. Was that your shin that bumped into my foot? There's a train in 15 minutes. Wonder if I can make it. Can you make it? We'll help you. Grab that sack, Judy. I've got this one. Put me down! Goodbye, <laughs> Mother. Goodbye. Goodbye, Judy, dear. You may kiss me now. By the number. Parker. Hop. Two, three. Well, I guess I've got a little goodbye kiss for Mother, too. Don't get mushy. Oh, Judy, darling. Oh, Harvey, alone at last. Uh -huh. Now, look, don't feel badly about Mother, dear. We still have all day together. A whole wonderful day. Yeah. And just think we can sleep right through till 8 o'clock tomorrow. And no bugle waking us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Harvey, mm. do you love me? Uh, yeah. Why do I put these dishes away, huh? Kiss me. You bet I will. Now, who can that be? Judy, it's the Colonel. Grandma! Just got a 24 hour pass, thought I'd spend it with you. Addie! Smoke, if you like! <laughs> A car drives in at the sign of the flying red horse. It's grimy, weather-beaten, and dull. That car looks like Sam Hill. Now we'll allow a few seconds for transformation. That same car drives out like a showroom job. It's gleaming, sparkling, the colors restored. Enter, looking like two cents. Exit, looking like a million. What went on? Mobile gloss and mobile wax went on. The body of that car got those two famous beautifiers, mobile gloss and mobile wax. You can do it yourself or have them applied by your friendly mobile gas dealer. Mobile gloss, which goes on first, cleans the finish and restores its original color and brilliance. Next, a sturdy, shining coat of mobile wax protects the surface, brings up the luster, keeps it gleaming for months. Try it. It's so easy. And the results are a knockout. You won't know your own car, folks. Drive in at the sign of the Flying Red Horse and ask for mobile gloss and mobile wax. Also, get your free use tax stamp protector. Have your mobile gas dealer pasted over the use tax stamp on your windshield. It protects your stamp when the windshield's washed or polished. Get yours free. Thanks, Lou. And now our Mercury All-Star Jazz Combination, which I think we should mention, includes the following great instrumentalists. Kid Ory trombone, Zooty Singleton drums, Bud Scott guitar, Ed Garland bass, Norman Bowden trumpet, and Fred Washington piano. They offer you now Royal Garden Blues. 
Tonight I'm going to read to you a couple of speeches from Shakespeare's Richard II in scenes two and three, act three. Bolingbroke has risen against Richard. His numbers are growing. And Richard, returning to England, learns that the rebellion may cost him his throne. comfort no man speak let's talk of graves of worms and epitaph make dust our paper and with rainy eyes write sorrow on the bosom of the earth let's choose executors and talk of wills and yet not so for what can we bequeath Save our deposed bodies to the ground. Our lands, our lives, and all are bowling brooks, and nothing can we call our own but death. And that small model of the barren earth, which serves as paste and cover to our bones. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of kings, how some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed, some poisoned by their wives, some sleeping killed, all murdered. For within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of a king keeps death his court, and there the antic sits, scoffing his state and grinning at his pomp, 
allowing him a breath. A little scene to monarchize. Be feared and kill with looks. Infusing him with self and vain conceit. As if this flesh which walls about our life were brass impregnable. And humored thus comes at the last. And with a little pin. Bores through his castle wall. And farewell, king. Milige, one word. He does me double wrong that wounds me with the flatteries of his tongue. Discharge my followers. Let them hence away from Richard's night to Bolingbroke's fair day. must the king do now? Must he submit? The king shall do it. Must he be deposed? The king shall be contented. Must he lose the name of king? For God's name, let it go. I'll give my jewels for a set of beads. My gorgeous palace for a hermitage. My gay apparel for an armsman's gown. My figured goblets for a dish of wood. My scepter for a palmer's walking staff. My subjects for a pair of carved saints. And my large kingdom for a little grave. A little, little grave. An obscure grave. Or I'll be buried in the king's highway. Some way of common trade where subjects' feet may hourly trample on their sovereign's head. For on my heart they tread whilst now I live. And buried once, why not upon my head? O Merle, thou weepst, my tender-hearted cousin... We'll make foul weather with despised tears. Our sighs and they shall lodge the summer corn and make a dearth in this revolting land. Or shall we play the wantons with our woes and make some pretty match with shedding tears? Huh. As thus, to drop them still upon one place till they have fretted us a pair of graves within the earth. And therein laid their lives, two kinsmen dig their grave with weeping eyes. Would not this ill do well? Well, well, I see. I talk but idly and you laugh at me. Most mighty prince, my lord Northumberland. What says King Bolingbroke? Will his majesty give Richard leave to live till Richard die? You make a leg. And Bolingbroke says, I. My lord, in the base court, he doth attend to speak with you. May it please you to come down. Down, down I come, like glistering Phaeton, wanting the manage of unruly jade. In the base court, base court where kings grow base to come at traitors' calls and do them grace. In the base court, come down, down court, down king. For night owl shriek where mounting larks should sing. <laughs> The makers of Mobile Oil and Mobile Gas again bring you Austin Wells. Susan Haywood appeared through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of I Love a Soldier. Kate Thompson appeared through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Bathing Beauty. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.